It's over. It's finally fucking over. Thank God. Oh my God. Wow. That felt like the longest week of all time. It started out really fun. Oh my God. Two of the best rappers ever are going to go track for track. Crazy. And then the tracks came out and they're all just like depressing and really mean. And they're all like filled with negativity and toxicity. It's like, yeah, this is fun, right? He's calling him a pedophile. He's calling him a wife beater. This is so fun. It's over. Right? There's not gonna be like another track, is there? Is there gonna be another track? It's over. Let's just say it. It's fucking over. And now, let's do a little post-mortem. I'm gonna power rank people from, you know, the people who won. I don't I don't fucking know. Let's just Let's just get into the shit. Let's begin with some people who aren't exactly involved in the beef enough to be, you know, ranked on the list, but they're definitely involved in some way or another, right? First, we got Adonis. Imagine you're like six years old and two of the biggest rappers in the world just put you right in their crosshairs. You're already mentioned on like two of the greatest diss tracks of all time and you're barely old enough to read. That kid's lore is already insane. And now he's gotta go back to school and kids are gonna be like, ha ha, your dad has a secret daughter. Sexy Red. I love Sexy Red, man. And if I took a picture with Sexy Red, I'd look like a bad bitch too. Rick Ross hasn't done much in the way of music, so he's he's dropped down on this list. He's online, you know, he's making it known that he hates Drake. Posting tweets, videos. White boy, white boy, white boy. Crody, Crody, Crody. Don't do it. Don't go write an eight minute verse that, I know nigga Yachty, I know you wanna get that money, you ain't wrong nigga, keep buying them big houses, but I'ma tell you this like a real nigga. Ain't no more BBLs, ain't no more ass fillers, ain't no more cheek fillers. As the beef progressed, all the side players kind of like peeled off. It just became about Drake versus Kendrick. And Rick Ross understood that. And Rick Ross was just like, let me like send let me send shots from afar, you know? <laughs> Let me like throw a couple, you know, grenades in there on my own, right? I hate the fact that I have to talk about DJ Academics, but I think I can't ignore him anymore because he has taken advantage of this beef and elevated himself as a media personality. He was already pretty well known, but thanks to this beef, he has become the number one source for all Drake news. Whenever anything involving Drake happens, DJ Academics is around it. DJ Academics is reporting on it. DJ Academics is the number one Drake guy now. And there's money in that. There's money in being the number one Drake dick writer. His subscriber numbers have probably gone up significantly. More people are probably watching his stream than ever before. Kendrick Lamar mentioned him on a song. As I pick the carcass apart, yeah, somebody's lying. I can see the vibes on act. Even he looking compromised. Let's peel the layers back. Ain't no. Nigga, what? Hold up. Bro's more famous than he's ever been, and I hate that. I don't like DJ Academics. I don't like DJ Academics at all. The Future is just a mystery to me, man. He drops these two albums, both of which rappers send shots at Drake. He doesn't really say anything too directly aimed at Drake. The albums are dropped. And radio silence from Future. Radio silence from Future. Nothing. While Drake and Kendrick are just beefing it up, Future says nothing. Nowhere. No tweets, no Instagram posts, nothing. Now there's no denying, Future is a winner in this beef. Two number one albums, a number one single. That's a big fucking deal, right? But he's done nothing else. Nothing. During this whole thing, Future has been benefiting from other people's work. He hasn't had a verse or a solo song that's really like, you know, grabbed people's attention. Like That went number one because of Kendrick Lamar. We Don't Trust You went number one because of Kendrick Lamar. We still don't trust you 
went number one because of Kendrick Lamar <laughs> and Metro. Metro had a lot to do with that. But Future has done nothing. I know he can do it, but he hasn't done it. Jermaine, Jermaine Cole. I don't think anyone has ever benefited so much from not participating. J. Cole is the guy that missed his flight on 9-11. How many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Everyone was on his ass when he first apologized. Everyone was dunking on him like, you loser. How could you apologize to Kendrick Lamar? Like, this is rap beef. But as soon as we became acquainted with the wrath of Kendrick Lamar, the real wrath of Kendrick Lamar, unabated in real time, we started to understand where J. Cole was coming from. Like, to be a part of this beef, you had to get really negative. Kendrick and Drake rolled in the mud. They sunk to the depths of depravity to destroy each other. They destroyed each other in the public eye. And J. Cole avoided all of that. He's happy. He might have lost all street cred forever. I don't think he needs that though. I think he's content in who he is and what he's done. He's earned his spot in the rap game and he's happy. He does not need rap beat. Looking back on 7 Minute Drill in hindsight and comparing it to the diss tracks that Drake and Kendrick would later drop, J. Cole was not built for this. J. Cole was playing with the big boys. J. Cole could not get that negative. Drake and Kendrick got negative. <laughs> they went at each other. J. Cole wouldn't do that. J. Cole was not built for this beef and he understood that and he made the adult mature decision to pull himself out of it because it would have gotten hairy real fast. I wanted to shout out Malcolm Ward, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry for all the years of jokes about the 2012 Grammys. I didn't know your game. I didn't know your game, Malcolm Ward. While Kendrick and Drake are like spouting negativity at each other and destroying each other in the public eye, Malcolm Ward is paying attention to the things that matter. Across the world, people are being bombed and there's a genocide happening. And Macklemore seems to be the only rapper besides No Name and Lupe Fiasco at all talking about it. <laughs> and Macklemore is doing it in the most public way possible. He is telling people and he is not at all hiding his beliefs. He's being loud and proud about Palestine and I'm gonna give him props for that. Ever since October 7th and before then, Macklemore has been 10 toes motherfucking down, wearing the kafia. He's been fucking doing concerts for aid and benefit. He's been at protest. Shouts out my dude, Michael Moore. I'm with you, man. Conscious rappers get way more credit than they are due for just rapping about issues and doing nothing else. Michael Moore isn't just rapping about it, he's being about it, you feel me? Shouts out, Michael Moore. Fuck yeah. Metro motherfucking booming. It just feels like he set this whole thing up. This entire thing was a trap for Drake to set off the events that would lead to Drake's downfall. He really is the puppet master. And now with this BBL drizzy shit, bro made a diss instrumental. And then not only did he make the instrumental, he mobilized thousands of people of all ages, of all creeds and colors to come together and fucking eviscerate Drake. Doesn't matter how good of a rapper you are, it doesn't matter what language you speak, it doesn't matter how old you are, they all came together and jumped on BBL Drizzy and fucking roasted Drake. Like, Drake told him to shut the fuck up and make some drums. The way he, like, maneuvered around that line and fucking kicked the shit out of Drake again? Genius. Metro Boomin should be a general. Metro Boomin should be a politician. Bro is a master tactician. Let's begin by going over what Drake did. 
Since the last video, Drake has dropped on Instagram a Buried Alive interlude verse where he copied Kendrick's flow on Buried Alive, made fun of it, made fun of Kendrick, talked about how he, you know, brought Kendrick along in the early days of his career, helped him find an audience, and then right after that, he dropped Family Matters a three-part six-minute diss. The headline of this diss is Kendrick is a wife beater. Kendrick thinks he's saving the hood, thinks he's saving black people, when in reality he's doing nothing. He also said that Kendrick was short. Then Drake dropped the hard part six. Headlines of the hard part six, Drake, not a pedo. He's not a pedophile. He would never touch a kid. This is bad. We gotta definitely write a song about how we, we do not diddle kids. Do not diddle kids, it's no good diddling kids. There is no quicker way for people to think that you are diddling kids than by writing a song about it. Drake's not a pedophile, according to the hard part six. Also, evidently he fed fake information to Kendrick and evidently Kendrick bit on it. And evidently he's done with the beef. Evidently he's finished. Kendrick, you can drop as many tracks as you want, but I'm never dropping again. That is what Drake contributed to this beef since the last video. Drake did significantly better than I thought he would do. I thought he would drop a bunch of garbage. I thought it would be a complete and utter blowout, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It wasn't a complete and utter destruction. It was bad. It was really bad. Kendrick beat the fuck out of Drake, right? But Drake wasn't completely knocked out. He lost. Drake lost this beef. It is without a doubt that Drake lost this beef. Objectively. You can be a Drake fan and you can like make any sort of excuse for Drake. You can make any sort of argument for Drake. But he lost. Drake lost the fuck out of this beef. It was a blowout, but it wasn't as bad of a blowout as I thought it would be. It was a bunch of 12 year olds going up against the varsity basketball team, but the 12 year olds got like 20 points while the varsity basketball team got like 120. When the varsity basketball team should have gotten 500. This beef should have been an ass kicking. This beef should have ended Drake's career. Drake should be done. We've been waiting for years for Kendrick to fucking murder Drake, right? We've been waiting for so long for Kendrick to turn around and fucking bitch slap Drake into oblivion and we never hear from him again. We've been waiting for years for Kendrick to kill Drake. It happens, but Drake doesn't go down so easily. Drake goes track for track with him for the most part. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> Drake's tracks, they don't exactly break the internet to the extent that Kendrick's tracks did. I remember people listening to Drake's tracks be like, oh shit, Drake's going in. Drake is, Drake is going, going, is rapping. He's going at Kendrick. Like there are some lines on Family Matters that genuinely made me giggle. And like the whole wife beater line, that's really mean. That's awful, that's terrible. Drake landed some punches. He made some shots. He got on base. And we gotta give him props for that. I'm gonna give him props for that. For the first time in his entire career, Drake was the underdog. Drake was fighting from a deficit and he came nowhere near clearing that deficit, but he got a few shots in. Proud of you, Drake. I don't know if this is over for Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar could be dropping another fucking diss track as I'm making this video. What an insane display. Kendrick Lamar went insane. He dropped Euphoria, 616 in LA, fucking Not Like Us, and Meet the Grams. Not in that order. But he dropped four tracks in one week. That's an EP. Bro has an I Hate Drake EP. None of those tracks were cheap to make. Those tracks cost fucking money to mix, master, and produce, right? To get a track from Jack Antonoff, Alchemist, DJ Mustard. That shit costs money. Kendrick put so much time and energy into this beef. It was insane. Like he literally lost his fucking mind. All because of this light-skinned man. And all the tracks went viral because he said a bunch of insane shit. Every single track 
moved the culture in one way or another. Everywhere was talking about Kendrick Lamar and Drake because of how insane Kendrick Lamar is. Kendrick Lamar has been waiting to do this for years. Kendrick Lamar has not liked Drake for so long. And this year, he saw his opportunity to fucking murder him. He wanted to end Drake. Did he do it? No. But he got pretty damn close. He went in far too hard. He really almost stepped over the line. People were genuinely asking, can a diss go too far? Kendrick Lamar is a student of Tupac. I fucked your wife. Did Tupac fuck Faith Evans? Who knows? But he said it on a song and it's lasted for 30 years. Kendrick Lamar understands that. If it's real, if it's not, who fucking cares? I said it on a track and it's going to last forever now and you're going to have to deal with that. And look at all the effects his disses are having. He's got people shooting outside of Drake's house over rapping. Drake's trying to end Kendrick's like career. Drake's trying to like, you know, knock him down off the pedestal. Kendrick is trying to get Drake murdered actively. He's an insane person. And that's why he won. Drake had no chance at all because Kendrick hates him. <laughs> Kendrick genuinely despises Drake. Drake has like a, 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 like a healthy dislike for Kendrick. I don't know if they ever had any sort of affinity for each other. Like even when they were on tour together and when Kendrick was on Drake's album, I don't even know if they liked each other then. But now, there's no love between them. There's none. Especially coming from Kendrick's side. That's why he won. That's why Kendrick won. Also because Kendrick is like deeply, deeply disturbed. Kendrick is a crazy person. And this beef proved it. So it's really over, huh? It's over. What a thing we witnessed. That was insane, right? I've never experienced anything like this in my life. I've never experienced anything so insane in rap music, in music in general, ever. It feels like Meek Mill Drake and Pusha T Drake were just appetizers for Kendrick Lamar Drake. We all knew it's gonna get hot out here between those two. It was just simmering and simmering for so long and it exploded. And it sort of exceeded expectations when it came to like the straight up negativity and toxicity of it. Like I didn't think they hated each other that much. They genuinely don't like each other. And think about that. The two biggest rappers on the fucking planet came out publicly and said very loudly, very blatantly, that they fucking hate each other. That they despised each other. That they never liked each other. That's crazy. And it happened so fast. It felt like an eternity, but it was only like a week. And it's over? It's over now? Really, is it? Baby Keem has an album coming out sometime this year. Childish Gambino, he doesn't like Drake. Childish Gambino does not like Drake. Maybe he jumps in. I don't think it's over. I don't think it's over by a long shot. I don't think this thing ends in a Drake Kendrick Lamar world tour. They don't like each other. They don't like each other at all. And they're never going to like each other. They're not patching this shit up. Drake accused Kendrick Lamar of being a wife beater. Kendrick called Drake a pedophile in 30 different fucking ways. You don't come back from that. You don't like dap up and be like, yay man, that, I went way too far. There's no crossing that bridge. There's no breaching that canyon. It's fucking over between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And that's really too bad. That's really too bad. I like both of them in different ways. I like Kendrick Lamar a lot more, but I like Drake's music, some of the songs. I would love for them to collab. I would love for people to get along, you know? I don't want people to hate each other. I like positivity. Is that is that like corny to say? I'm glad it's over because, you know, there's other shit in the world going on. Other more important shit going on, right? And we should be looking at that. We should be worried about that. Is rap beef good? Yes, rap beef is good. God, if another track drops while I'm editing this fucking video. <laughs> I'm literally gonna jump out of a building. Like, I'm. 
They gotta stop. Strike.